Welcome to the Speedway Chat Show hosted by Jerry Sims and Wilbur Hancock. We would like to say a massive thank you to all our partners that make the show possible. Make sure you like, comment, and share our videos. It helps get Speedway in front of more people. It's really easy to find our podcast. Just say, hey, Alexa, play Speedway Chat Show Podcast. Enjoy, buckle up, and get ready for an awesome ride. Hey, guys, it's Wednesday afternoon, and we have another Speedway Chat Show. How are you, Will? Are you all good? I'm doing great, Jess. How are you? Pretty good. I've had a mental week. It's been so busy. I can relate uh, but on it's that. all it's all it's all going good. Um, what have you been up to? You know what? It hasn't been I mean it hasn't been like super crazy, but it's just been, you know, tire sales and uh working on bikes, getting ready for this actual season that's starting. Well, if you don't know it's really gonna happen, but uh dad got back from Poland this last week. Uh we had a nice week off there in, in, in Palm Springs, but it was back to reality this week. Um, which is good though, because, uh, next week we're going back to like full person in person school, uh, still with the mask, but I mean, it's a good sign. And I feel like we're going in the right direction, no matter where we're at right now. Happy days. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. It's, um, easing, they're easing restrictions here in the UK. They've opened pubs so you can like drink in the gardens and things like that. You, you know, and you're allowed to meet six people. So it's all going in the right direction for sure. And with the vaccine, um, yeah. too, I think it's helping. I mean, we've now, I think it's able to almost all Americans here. Um, they had it to, I think, 16 and over, but I think it's even, like, lower now. So I think that's a, that's a step in the right direction as well. Yeah, for sure. You're going to have a vaccine? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If, if, it's required, <laughs> if it's required to travel, then I'll take it. But if not, then I don't, I don't think so. You, you'll leave it. Leave it for that. Yeah. So, um we, we've spoken to Jason Crump before. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a great guest, obviously, three times world champion. Um, wanted to get him on. Obviously, since the last time we had him on, he's signed for Plymouth. and We want to sort of speak to him about that, hear his thoughts and uh, see what's, what's happening with his upcoming season. You know, um, also with uh, his son, Seth, racing in the UK on the Superbikes as well. We'll hear all about that. So, uh, Wilbur, do you want to give him the uh, introduction that he deserves? I believe so. Uh, the the world champ, the legend, Mr. D- Jason Crump. You? How Thank are you, you, dude? You good? Very well. <laughs> you good? You were saying before you not you not been feeling great the last last few days. It's normal. You arrived from Australia <laughs> thirty plus degrees hot into this, and. Um, you end up with a cold pretty quickly and easily. So, yeah. The only yeah. thing I, I didn't have was COVID because obviously with the quarantining and the amount of testing you do, um, yeah, I'm clear of that. But yeah. I've, been, I've been pretty pretty rough. <laughs> cool. What have you been up to since you've been back here in the UK? Well, you start off with your mandatory home isolation. So we, we went through that and then um, – uh, being probably busier with Seth, actually, um, getting him. Um, he had to go to the Midlands for some physical testing with, with Leon Haslam and the team. And, um, yeah, a few commitments with the with the road racing team that he's had to attend. So, yeah, it's been pretty busy. I think that kind of sets up. Who do you think is busier this year, you or Seth? When the Speedway starts, meeting-wise, of course, I'm busier, but there's so many things that go on with the road racing, um, sponsor commitments, uh, test days. Um, yeah. So he, he's actually going to be pretty busy himself as well. And the difference with us is we rock up at a race meeting at 5 PM and we're on our way home by 10 30, you know, the, the road meetings, you're at the track at, at the circuit, eight, eight thirty AM and you leave at six, seven PM. So they're they're pretty yeah. long. Days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Do they have a lot of practices? Oh. Different classes. It, it's, I mean, everything's scheduled 
really well. Um, they have when you say practice, you mean a pra a pri like private practice days or? Yeah, I think I mean just yeah. they get track time no matter what. Yeah, you, you like this season. I think BSB have five official tests. Some are one day and some are two day tests that you can have three or four. 30 40 minute sessions a, yeah. a day so um yeah he he's got a there's a fair bit of track time available and then there's private track days and ride days that you can book and go to as well oh that's good though because I, yeah. I i've seen things about like the moto gp uh, when you're at the top level they, they i think they have maybe one or two practices a year or something like that unless it's at the track you know they get their practice qualifying whatever but like yeah. private practices aside from that is like nothing I think I think the cost of running the MotoGP bikes has something to do with that. Um, I, I would think that those guys, if, if if you if you're in the MotoGP, I wouldn't think it's too difficult to have maybe a bike that's maybe a World Superbike spec or a, a high level bike to mm. go and practice on. But actual bike time on the race bike is is probably quite limited. Mm -hmm. I see. Is is it an eye opener? You know, like seeing all the tech that goes involved with the with the super bike stuff. You know, compared to Speedway, because Speedway is pretty much a push bike frame with a clutch and an engine, in it, isn't it? Yeah, the bike. You know, I've, I've I don't know a whole lot about it, obviously, but um, the suspension's very, very important, crucial. Um, yeah. You know, getting the rider. There's nothing that's set in stone it's all it all comes down to the rider's feel and how he wants the bike so the road riders um certainly pay a lot of attention to how the bike feels because you know let's be honest in speedway you can you can make changes and more often than not they change something in here but actually having a reaction to the change on the track sometimes can be absolutely so minute that the performance that you gain or lose out of the changes is, is barely recognizable where yeah, yeah on the on the road bikes you can move things two millimeters and you look at the lap times and you can see a difference and when you go from the overall lap to the sectors of the track you can see where it's stronger in with one setting and weaker with that setting and then when it's changed it can be vice versa so it's <laughs> like with everything there's a compromise with everything and um it's you know it's it's racing and it's kind of fun and it's interesting do you do you see your uh your you know your mental racing state do you see some of that in seth you can't really compare the racing itself to from road racing to, to speedway you know but do you feel like you you've uh, adapted some or inherited some, or he has inherited from you some things I, I, it's hard to say because obviously this a speedway race is like that it's an explosive one minute or 70 seconds depending on how big the track is but um i think if if he had the attitude that i had when i was 18 to 20 years old i think he'd be he'd burn his tires out in the first lap and a half of the race and then he'd be cooked for the rest of it so um <laughs> uh you know you, even now you you watch the moto gp and you see the guys you know they set a pace in the first two or three laps of the race and it's not maybe as fast as they went in qualifying but they've got to try and hold that pace for the whole race when the tires start to go off as well. So the road racing, I think mentally it's, it's pretty tough because you've got to be able to manage your pace and manage your tires and still go fast enough to try and win. That's true. And I mean, the fact you're talking about the tires and stuff as a speeder rider, you can feel it after, you know, after a lap, all oh, these tires are horrible, but I mean, thinking about it and you have to, you have to work with it though. When you come to the uh, when you come to road racing, you have to work with a, with more of a burnout tire. When it comes to speedway, you can run it for a heat, and then you flop or switch the edge, and then you go out for the next one, and then you have yeah. another brand new edge. So, I mean, it's it's rare that you have a problem where you need to work with a used tire. Well, yes, but in England, you only have one tire for the whole meeting, so I'll be working with some used tires this year. <laughs> I mean, you're Jason Crump. You can you can you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, yeah, the, the whole the 
the road racing thing for me has I've I've also had to learn um, or try and learn try and understand a, a lot of different racing. So it's uh, it's pretty interesting. We we actually have a a practice bike. We have our own bike from the team to go to the go to the tracks whenever we want for for free practice. Oh, that's really nice. And they just they give you one of those when you get for the team. Yeah, yeah. Seth's with um, the Affinity Team Green Kawasaki. Team. Yeah, yeah. That's that's it. Which is run by Leon Haslam, and um, we had a great day up so, there a couple of weeks ago. Um, I got to hang out with his dad, Ron, um, and talk about racing from the speedway uh, road racing from the late seventies when he started, uh, right the way through to now, and it's it was one of the reasons. He wasn't comparing, was you? You're not that old. No, I'm not quite as old as one. Um, <laughs> no, it, was, it was great talking because when you, you know, when you talk to to racers, speedway, motocross, it it doesn't matter. You you're all racers, so it was yeah. good. Yeah, and that was, that was one of the reasons why I was so keen for Seth to join that team. Obviously, with with Ron's experience and Leon's experience still being with Leon being an active world superbike rider still. Um, I think I think you can learn a lot from them this year. That's really good. Cool. And and you you, on, you were saying on. then oh I was going to say you were saying you don't know that much about the the superbike things. Like what is your involvement with it? Uh, are you in the pits like he like I think seen at Bellevue? He was spanning for you this uh, last year and stuff. Are, are you? Do you I, have I, any say, or is it? It's, it do you just hands off, let the team take over? Well, last year we ran our own team, so. The decision, okay. as far as I'm concerned, the decision always ends with the rider. And you know, yeah. we I help. We had help last year from people and uh, uh, stuff. But um, the majority of the work up the on the bike at the track last year was down to to me. So, um, uh, Craig, uh, Craig Cummings helped me out a, a bit. Um, you yeah. know. I, made a few panic phone calls to him during the course of race weekends and and uh, asked for advice on, on suspension settings of course. suspension yeah and um he was he was very helpful and um again this year we're hoping to get uh craig to a few practice days with us so we can so we can uh use get it dialed in like knowledge as well yeah yeah that's really so, cool so i know this, this year actually to answer the original question this year seth has his own uh, personal mechanic um right so i will be melody and i will be at the races but we're not quite as hands-on as what we have been that's really cool because yeah. uh, uh <coughs> kawasaki is a really a really cool uh, really cool company and i was sp speaking to rider francisco a couple weeks ago and i was speaking to his dad as well uh rider who you guys don't know he's a uh i think he's a pro-am i could say um motocross rider from over here and he's he's rocking it right now he's doing so good um and he's been you know with his dad his dad rode speedway through his whole um i mean from day one to like i think it was like early 20s and then he stopped for a little bit and then he came back on and he rode and just rode a little bit and stuff like that but um rider signed for team green kawasaki in the motocross division over here and uh, after that, it was like they gave him a mechanic. They gave him all this. And his dad kind of, you know, showed up to the races and kind of said, here's my kid. I'm going to go have a beer in the grandstand <laughs> or whatever <laughs> he wants to do, you know. That's and, my um, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and But he's always there and he's always helping out no matter what, you know, which is so cool to see. And uh, I don't know if how much involvement he had in motocross before Ryder picked it up. Um but you know he knew he knew a few things. You know how to you know lefty loosey righty tidy, and I think that's what you needed to know. And uh, I mean, it's a, they're cool people. And hearing his story and hearing th their story in general is just it's awesome. And uh, look, just going back, Kawasaki is a great company. I think it's awesome that Seth is there now. Yeah, it's it's really good for him, and it's it's good to have some support from the manufacturer. In when you're in road racing and motocross, it, it's so important to have to have that. So. Um, that's yeah. awesome. We're, we're funding it mainly. <laughs> Gets expensive. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so is your is your wife is your wife over here now? Because you no, came over not. just the two of you, didn't you? 
Yeah, the two of us came. She's she's probably a, uh, three or four weeks, maybe a bit more away. Just soaking up the sun for a little bit. While yeah, it's still there. And, and I don't blame her for that either. <laughs> Neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, says you in California. Um, hey, you so got to do what you got to do, all right? <laughs> let's, let's talk about you, Jace. Let's, um, so Plymouth this year, how did, the, how did that come about, like, what made you make the decision to think, you know, I'll, I'll do both leagues? What are you and... me for, Jerry? Because you were involved in it. Well, I was. You know the story. Well, no, I know the story, but the people watching don't know the story. But, but um, who, no, who, wants, story to hear, who wants to listen to Jerry talk? I okay, mean, okay right. So, me, though. no, what happened is Mark phoned me up and said, can you phone Crumpy and see if he'll ride for Plymouth and I said no <laughs> what a, what a good well, friend Bob. but hey what a, what a no, great no, no. what a good friend no, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that it's like I, I I didn't think that you would have said yes I did the is, same is thing the for this answer. show I was like hey Jerry can you ask right? if Crumpy can come on the show he's like no <laughs> no um, no Such all seriousness trick. like when I, when I, when Mark phoned me up I said look I don't like, I, I know Jason I'm not best mates with him I said but I think your best bet is to speak to Drew and you know if if Drew thinks it's a good idea he'll ask him so that's what happened is he he went and um yeah, asked he, asked Drew Mark and Mark spoke with you and then Mark spoke to my uncle and anyway yeah. um it's really quite cool I haven't as you know Jerry I haven't been down there just yet um yeah to look at anything but um but Me. you just got to go to the end of the straight and turn left. It, yeah, that's what Mark keeps A few more times. <laughs> so, um, for me, the location of where Plymouth is and where my uncles and aunts are is perfect. So, um, may I, I'm excited and I'm happy about it because, honestly, when you look at the top league, um, six teams, you're racing, mm. racing five other teams. It's a short season. Yeah, yeah. There's not many meetings. And, yeah, yeah. You know, when you haven't ridden very much like I haven't in the in the recent past, the meetings are important to, to get you going. And I noticed that in Australia when you know when I started to do when I when I went back from here last year and I did some meetings. Once I kind of had three or four meetings, I I felt much better on the bike and um that's good. having the opportunity to have you know, I think I've got five meetings in the first week of the season. So, oh, that, happy days! <laughs> you got, you got back to back days, haven't you? I think you've got Monday Monday at Ipswich, and then oh no, is it Kings like, Lynn? Kings Lynn, yeah. Kings Lynn on on the first day, and then the yeah. second day of the season, you're at, you're at Plymouth. And then we're so, at, and then we're at Ipswich on the third day, and Scunthorpe on the Friday. Wow. <laughs> have we, have we with on the Saturday, Jerry? I can't remember. I I have no idea. I've not looked into it. Yeah, but, but it's, um, oh, yeah. it's four meetings then. Okay, so it's four, not five. But yeah, four meetings in the first week, and probably another four in the second week, and yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so, did you feel like it benefited you to ride throughout the winter as well over there in in that, Aussie? Definitely. The on, the only issue I had was um, the wrist I broke. At motocross last year um i had a i had some bone fragments that were floating in my wrist and one of the screws had come loose as well so Oof. um it was Sounds causing nice. me it was causing me a bit of a problem but i actually had that um i had surgery about i'm gonna say about six eight weeks ago <laughs> yeah there you go nice um what a legend he is <laughs> yeah um yeah, it's it's good now and it, it feels really good and um It's your clutch hand, right? Yeah. Ah, you're fine. <laughs> it yeah, was you just got that one. Oh, I that one's straight. One thing, buddy, by the end of the night <laughs> the meetings in Australia, I was struggling to pull the clutch in at the end of the oh, night. Oh god. <laughs> wow. Well, um, yeah. I know when I oh, just so sprain a wrist, I'm just like, oh man. And you get a small little bump from the bike. It's like, oh god, that's that hurts. <laughs> it wasn't the bump so much. It was it was actually it was a it was gripping 
that was what was causing me the problem and i had because it was fragments in there i was getting uh it was kind of getting stuck a little bit sometimes but mm. it's better Ooh. now yeah so um old uh toby price is it toby price that's the name isn't it? yeah 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 like you, you met you know him bef before going into the hospital or was oh randomly met him before yeah, or yeah yeah i've, I've known yeah. I've known Toby before he was a, a Dakar rider. I've known Toby for probably 12, 12 to 15, well, maybe not 15. He's not that old, but yeah, 10 years plus anyway. Yeah. yeah I watched his documentary. He's a loose dude, isn't he? Like he's absolute a, animal. <laughs> but he's the, the good, the Toby's an Aussie bloke and yeah. he was, the same when I met him 12 years ago, let's say, as to what he is now. The success he's yeah. had has changed him. He's still a very polite, funny Aussie bloke. Yeah, yeah really cool. Good. Have you have you had any moments where you're like, you know, you're friends with Mark Webber, you're friends with him, and like where you're sort of just a bit like, how good? Like, I, I've had it personally where I've been like, wow. I, I'm in this situation because of what I've done in the past and things like that. What's what's your moment where you've gone, wow, I never thought this would happen when I was a kid or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, but um I'm I'm sure that there's I'm sure that there's people that, that make you feel like that if if you're fortunate enough to meet them, but you, mm. you see people that yeah, I not necessarily like people, but like like for instance, I, I was I performed once at X Games, and I remember s sort of just stopping myself, going, "Fuck, is this real?" Like because I remember watching X Games on TV when I was a kid or whatever, and I, I was actually in that moment. If I, if if that makes sense, yeah. And well, I imagine there was millions yeah, of people all over the world was, watching it. Who, who thought that we who thought that we'd get to race Speedway at the Millennium Stadium or uh, yeah, State yeah. Australia in Sydney? You know, or things like that. Yeah, for sure. You go pretty cool to be here and be part of this right now yeah but, uh, but you know anyone going, that stands out going but no mate i mean you okay. know <laughs> you meet you meet guys like valentino but they're mick Doohan. um yeah 15 20 years ago the first time i met mick Doohan, yeah i would have been like yeah sh you know how cool is this to meet mick but you understand yeah. these guys there's some that make you feel that you should feel like that but then the good guy the the friendly guys and the blokes that are normal you just talk away yeah, to yeah, yeah. you've known them forever in a day you know yeah for sure guys like wayne gardner and casey stoner and mick they daryl beady troy bayless they're they're just yeah. regular regular dudes who love motorbikes yeah okay it, it was more like um yeah, it was more more the experiences I was, I was sort of after, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I don't know, going to like FIM meet galas and things like that that were like epic. But anyway, <laughs> I, only, no, I mean, like, I actually only ever went to one um, because the oh, time right? I won the world championship, they weren't doing that. So the only one I went to was with your dad, actually, in 1995 in Las Vegas. It was the AMA oh, really? award one night and the FIM awards the other, the other, and and he was national speedway champion. I was under twenty one world speedway champion. Ah, uh, yeah. So, so then they they yeah. did the AMA the night before the FIM, or vice versa. I can't remember which way it was, but we were there. Myself and uh, Hans, Kelvin was long track world champion and. Posa Peroloff was Ice Speedway World Champion. Huh. Wow. That's really cool. Sick. Nice, yeah. nice little weekend in Vegas. Then. In the... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was watching the uh, the other day, and I think it was like a 95 GP at Coventry or something like that. And like you see all the riders, all you boys, there was like, I think you, Sully, and <laughs> There was there was loads of young riders. The the younger riders aren't really like that in the GPs now. If you know what I mean, they are like the later twenties, early thirties, if that makes sense. But in that era, there was a load of boys like yourself that were just pulling up trees on the world stage. If that makes any sense at all. Well, 
yeah, there, there was a few younger ones, but you know, um, Smarznik is world champion twice now. And what, how old's he? 26, yeah. you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. um, <coughs> the, you know, freak Max isn't so old and <clears throat> and stuff, so yeah. um, different, different years have different age group of riders, but um. There's, there's always a few young fellas in there, I think. Yeah, I, I just remember it being like you, there was a few of you that sort of stuck around for a long time in that in that age group, if if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, when now there's yeah there are the odd, like Ty came in and sort of did real well when he was real young. You know, Smarzik's there is again doing it now, but I think it's a it's a little bit harder to be that consistent. I think now compared to before, where there were like yourselves that were coming in and doing real well i disagree with that i don't think it's harder to be consistent now i think there's a lot of riders no. that are not as consistent now um okay i i think i think that the and this is nothing against the riders now but i think that when you look at the grand prix from well let's say from when the grand prix started um hmm. there's a reason why there's there was a group of guys. I was for, fortunately for me, I was one of them after a little while. Wilbur's dad was one mm -hmm. of them for a very long while. Um, yeah. And we were able to keep a quite consistent level of performance going. There's nothing, okay. there's nothing that changes people being able to be consistent apart from those people. Right. I see what okay. you mean. Your, da your dad is a consistent man in life, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, that reflected in his racing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll go for that. And yeah. you can, I'll agree so with that. When I, when I say that to you, go back and look at some other riders that have meetings up here. Mm -hmm. They have a meeting down here. Yeah. What's their lifestyle like? Yeah, 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 I see. I can. I can see yeah. how you how you mean that as well. You need to have well a lot of those riders too. I think they've gone through the years where they've they, where they've really been up and down. I mean, Woofie had that in two thousand what two thousand ten. Is that when he came in for the first time? I think two thousand. Yeah, yeah, he was a he was a kid then, and you know, yeah, exactly. He, he just and his dad, and it, you know, I think. I admired Ty, but I admire him hugely as as a as a person, as a speedway rider. I also admire him, but in two thousand ten time, um, with everything that he went through, for him to to continue that commitment to stay in the Grand Prix with everything that happened, that's that's beyond racing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's very cool, and I think that a lot of riders needed to have that year to like, whew, that was tough, you know, but then he came back even stronger in the first year back. He came in and wiped out the Grand Prix series and did really good. And he won the world championship mm. and he learned them. And now he, there's not been many years when he's done this. And then this, there hasn't been yeah. many, many of those years. He's always been in that top eight. Consistent. He, he, yeah. he is a pretty consistent guy, you know, yeah. like he trains hard always you know like he's, he's pretty he's a pretty consistent guy yeah. but then you get then you get riders like yanoski and i know yanoski really personally and i know how hard he works but sometimes it just doesn't click for him and sometimes he'll have that really mm. off night and that'll set him back he'll have a great first round great second round great third round and all of a sudden just skyrocket to the bottom and you're just like whoa what happened there yeah you know it, it, again it, it's not always about having a consistent life of, but of course it helps but mm -hmm. you talk about ty you know he's he's got a wife and he's got kids and you know he he's he's settled so yeah, yeah. for him to be more consistent for him to be a consistent speedway rider is normal for him to be an inconsistent mm. speedway rider is abnormal yeah Imagine, i'm not sure what what the problem is there well, but, but I agree with you because if we're honest about it, we looked at the first two Grand Prix last year and we went, well, the world champion's going to be Janowski or 
Laguta. Because they were flying. Yeah. Flying. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the the you know the next the next round in Gorjov. And I know Machek says he doesn't like Gorjov and you know it's not his favorite track, but he's got enough experience now and you know he's got enough people around him that can negate that from him and yeah he, he he just didn't i don't think he dealt with the situation well whereas smarslik on the other hand who has more who has more pressure in that second gp first one being the two nights and the second one being the next mm. two nights who has the most pressure Machek leading the world championship or smarslik who's world champion racing in his hometown in front of his home fans and he's had a medium first couple of Grand Prix. Because for me, yeah. I look at it and I go, it's no comparison. Smarznik is under mm. the pump. Yeah. 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 Going he, in after having a medium medium first two rounds, or first whatever you want to call it, you know, and then going yeah. in your hometown and you're the defending champion. And you, I think his odds were he was not the underdog coming out into that season. Def in my opinion, definitely not. But who was under the more pressure, in your opinion, in the in the GPs three and four in Gorjov? Machek because he's leading the championship, or Yanovsk or or Bartos, mm, because, Yeah, because yeah, of the situation yeah. he's in. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? People handle pressure pressure differently, and I think me and my dad were talking about this before the season even started. We sat down and we were just we started rambling off and stuff, and we were just discussing like. You know what? I think Bartek feels every single ounce of pressure, but he handles it completely differently than anyone else would have thought of. Because he, he, he wants it. Because yeah, he want he wanted that mm. pressure. He wants it, and he he wants the pressure because he knows that deep down that'll make him do something special on the bike. Yeah, yeah. So if you had a fiver to put a bet on. Who are you putting your money on for world champion of 2021? Well, um, I, if if he rides like he did last year, then Smarsley, because I, I can't see when he's at his best. And I think Ty was close to his best last year as well. I just think he's, Bartos has just got a little bit of a, little bit of an edge just now but i'd love to see ty or doily or Machek. you know what a great guy hmm. uh, step it up but they do in my opinion whoever's going to beat bartos has to step it up same yeah. as when to try and beat tony or greg or nikki or whatever we i was i was just about to touch on that topic um tony Right, Tony would come out. I think we were talking about this last on the last show with uh, Thomas. Um, Tony would come in with absolutely crazy things. You know, we were talking. I think we were talking about the hydraulic clutches, right? And then uh, my dad was like, "He he came out with hydraulic clutches a long time ago, and no one really knew about it. But everyone, he was running them, um, and he would come in with crazy things, and and he would put them in at the GPS. He would just pr try it out, you know." And I was watching a test match the other day, and it was Gorja versus Torin in Torin. Smarzik goes out, and he has an unbeatable heat. He literally was gone. Half a lap, easily be beating everyone. And then the next heat, he finished third behind Jack Holder and, and a, like a junior from Torin. And, uh, and I go in, and they zoom in on his mechanics and stuff, and I see them just switching everything. The bike's completely apart, almost, you know? And they're switching out stuff. And, and I'm just like, he's literally trying crazy things right now to see if it's working. Because he, is, he had an insane first heat. And then he's like, well, let's try this. Let's uh, do this to the ignition. Let's do that to the sprocket or whatever you're going to do, um, Jet. And he goes out there and he has a good start and whatever. But he stays in third place the whole time. And I'm like, that is something that you need. That's, that's what those training matches are for. Yeah. They're not about who's going to win, but he went out there and he probably learned so much that day. I doubt there's one practice or one race where he doesn't learn anything and any rider should be able to say the same thing. I, I agree. And I, I think that 
to have the confidence in yourself to do that um, is amazing. And obviously, clearly he does. And you see that when he's when he's halfway on form, you see it come through when he's riding. Yeah. And I, I mm. think... I, I'm going to go not, back and talk about that hydraulic clutch because um, Michael Blixt was... I'm sure he was the first one with a hydraulic clutch, like probably. late 80s, early 90s. So, yeah, I think I think Henke used to use it for a while. That's probably true. I don't I don't doubt that. I mean, people, uh, we were just talking oh, about Wilbur it. Wilbur wasn't born until 2005. Yeah. yeah. But you should ask your dad that um, because I'm sure that Blixt was a man with that because I, I tried it a couple of times at North Sherping for mm-hmm. – but I, I wasn't a fan of it back then. Um, yeah, we we had um, we had Thomas Kaczynski on last week, and uh, and he was saying about Tony, and he just said the stuff that he tried, people would be like, "Oh, he's mad! Like, why is he trying that?" And then all of a sudden, he was out winning using these mad ideas, and then he everyone was then like, "Oh, fuck! I need one of those," you know. And they're yeah. all trying to change things when he was going out and stuff that no one had never sort of seen before but you know hardly anyone's original are they they're all he always kept from some, something something or something like. yeah. yeah yeah it always went for the round wheels yeah <laughs> brilliant um we got uh heidi holloway uh do you i <laughs> uh, don't know if you remember me used to hang out at swindon when your dad rode with lee kilby and Ashby Bros. Yeah. Also, my bro, Wayne Holloway. Hope you're okay. Stay safe. All good. Do you remember, Heidi? Heidi? Yeah. <laughs> cousin, right? I think so. Yeah. I think it's actually his cousin. Yeah. 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 So, um, I know you uh, you sent me a photo the other day and you, your bikes are all uh, nearly ready. How far away? Like, how many bikes you have this year for, for racing two leagues in England? I have I have four, so I have two two black Ipswich bikes and two of my bikes for Plymouth, all from Martin Hagen. Okay, lucky dog. And how many bikes one. would you have like in your in your in your peak? How many bikes would you have? I remember we we had a photo for, of of Hans Anderson, and he had like nine bikes, and he's like, yeah, that's when I was on the GPs and this and the other. And he had them all lined up, obviously. I don't know. I have three. <laughs> Three or four in Poland and two or three in Sweden and you know three or four in England I suppose I I never had I never had bikes that I only used in the Grand Prix. Did your dad do that? Well, right. did he have bikes he just used in the Grand Prix? No, no, I, I did. He would use those bikes in Poland too, and I honestly think it would be because of getting used to those bikes as well because he has his. Yeah. He has his frames, and he I think he rarely bought new frames. He would use those frames for, I think, two or three seasons. Yeah. Um, go we, ahead. We used to just um, kind of no, note down how many meeting stuff are done and uh, your, how many races things are done, and um, it, wasn't, it wasn't like I'd get to the end of the season and sell 10 bikes or something. You know, sometimes you'd sell a couple of bikes. Sometimes you didn't need to sell bikes because nothing had done a whole lot of work. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I, I had one bike for like three years because it was a third bike in Poland and it never got raced. It yeah. Sat there for, mm. You know, it, it was never needed. And um, people yeah. need to also take into proportion that a speedo bike is literally a, a push bike. <laughs> it's the <laughs> frames. When was the last time a speedo bike frame has been changed? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like yeah. there's nothing new and crazy. Um, and I think so many people are like, Oh, we need to, we need new this and we need new that. And what I also think is really stupid is the muffler thing that you need to always switch. You need, your mufflers need to be in two years. Like say you have one bike that you've not ridden this whole season. You've never needed to knock on wood, you know, and then you need to go buy a brand new muffler for it because that one's too old. Yeah, well, fortunately in Australia, things like that don't really no, not here not either. Really but... enforced. Um, I, I think when the racing, when it's professional racing, you know, and riders are being paid, earning money from it, then 
Yeah, I get it a little bit, but it, it's still tough. I mean, do they enforce that in the U.S.? No. no. People are running, you know, their own mufflers if they want to, you know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened to – I remember – I mean, I, I had a long time where I was away from Speedway, but I remember antique frames. Those things were, like, bulletproof. You couldn't bend those. Like, I remember, like, all the other yeah, bikes. Yeah, were... <laughs> No, the one – Oh, uh, let me get this right. <laughs> no, the one the one that I broke real bad was actually not not an antique. That's what I had afterwards. <laughs> okay. Just in case I did it again. <laughs> there was there was lots of frames around, but um you know in, in the upright times there was lots of different frames and lots of riders used different stuff. Mm. But mm. Um, you know, with the with the laydowns, I guess the last twenty years has not been not been very much changed at all. We went from the round loop back end to the straighter one, and then I think your dad made the funny shape rear end and stuff. But it's all it's all the same. So, Jace, if you ever meet up with like Wilbur's dad or someone like that, do you ever talk about things that happened? years ago you know like maybe you had like a suspicion of something that you know if greg was doing something and you're like fuck how's he doing that i don't know how he's doing that like can you talk to him now and be like did you really do this this is what i thought you were doing or anything yeah, like, like that I, well i sent greg a message a little while ago um and asked him some things um about clutches actually and um yeah he i i told him what i thought was happening now and he agreed and and we you know he said yeah i found the same thing when i tried those things and stick with yeah. the options you know he said i always did yeah so, yeah i was I, I just needed to it's a little tough to know that you're exactly right sometimes so it was good to be able to do that with greg and um get some confirmation of what i thought yeah because like um, obviously before you had too much to like competition there to turn around and be like, oh yeah, I'll let them have a little bit of information that they might have found out. But but now it's yeah it's just the boys, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, we used to do it. We we we'd be in a car driving back from a Swedish league match or something to an airport where we're going to share a room. You end up talking about yeah. what happened that night, and you talk about oh yeah. I was struggling and then I dropped to a 57 and then the, then away I went and then somebody else in the car mm -hmm. says, shit, I started on a 57. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Get well, about anyway. Well, I think you also build a lot more respect <laughs> for those people because I mean, first of all, you, you can, you have complete different writing style than my dad and this yeah. person had a complete writing style than that guy and everyone's different in a way. But I think you build respect for each other as racers a lot more once you've, you've gone through it all with him, you know? You've gone – you guys were starting it in a similar time, and you guys ended in, you know, kind of same era. Um, and I think he wouldn't have said the same things to another rider or a new yeah. up-and-coming rider. And, but if – because it was you, and I think when you build respect with, with – you, if you have a friendship with another person if, and, uh, and you can call yourself buddies, I think it's like – dude, I just tried to do this and I tried to do that, but it didn't work. And it's, it's all right to do those things, you know, to the very specific detail, maybe not because you're probably unsure about the specific details as well. You wouldn't, you, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask a, a specific detail, you know, it's that's, that's would be out of respect for somebody else's information anyway. Yeah. But um, yeah. But you also wouldn't want to look like you don't know yourself, do you? Oh no! I think you're always going to be able to, admit that, you know, if you're at a point where you, you don't know everything, right? You've got to be able to put your hand up and say, "I'm, I'm stuck." I'm no. out. Yeah. <laughs> what teams so. did you and my dad race together in? Was there any? Was there? Yes, we were teammates in Halstevik. Really. 1995. Wow, that was it. You think that's the only? I think that's the only time we were. Yeah, wow. he said. He said to me, he didn't really want to race with Jason. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> um, I've got a video here. Do you, do you remember what happened here in this video? Let's, uh, let's get this out. Uh, the situation there is that Ollie Olsen, okay. who we've seen your picture of the race director, has instructed the race. Now, this is quite Look how angry you get. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I do actually remember that. Yeah. Do you remember what it was? It was at a Grand Prix in Golubid. It was Thomas. Um, yeah, of course it was Thomas. <laughs> have, I think Thomas was in front and his bike was breaking down. And he, I think we, me nah, and he, he missed the start. He missed, right. he missed he the start the completely. He said there was a yellow light that came on. And right. Ollie said that he had to rerun the race, but you won the race. Um, but yeah, yeah you, you get you get pretty irate. You walk off here in a second, and you come back, and you're like in Thomas Kaczynski's face and stuff. It's quite funny. Heat of the moment. But I can yeah. remember what was said because there were obviously there was four riders in the race, and and Thomas was the only one that that kicked up that, that kicked up about it. So yeah. I I can't remember ever seeing the light. Was Lima? Yeah, so, so, oh, was he? There was there was an action replay of it, and the light does come on, and you do see it, but it's a yellow light. It's not it's not a red light, and it, it was a constant light as well. Right. I think he was just chancing his arm, yeah. and yeah, uh, well, yeah for, for a second. Clearly, that's what I thought as well. And yeah, yeah. but yeah, you, you you got pretty angry with it. I think there's a. There's a shot there where uh, where Neil Street actually hits Ollie Olsen in like on his back. Going, you can't do that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty funny. Um, what else was I going to say? We've got any questions? Any more things from here? Um, is there any? Have you looked at anybody in the Premier League? Or no, not, it's not Premier League now, is it? Pr Championship? You know, is there any? Who who are you uh, looking forward to racing? Or is there anyone that you're thinking? Cool, we're going to get our asses kicked there. Or? There's a lot of tracks that are um, – there's a few tracks that I haven't been to, um, like the the Edinburgh and Glasgow. I've been, I've been there, but yeah, uh, um, the circuits are different now. They're different venues than, than when I rode at Edinburgh and Glasgow. Um, so that'll be yeah. pretty cool to go and race on some new tracks. Haven't raced at Berwick for like 20 years. <laughs> um, probably haven't raced at places like – Newcastle or some of those other tracks in that league for for twenty five years. So, um, hope I hope somewhere in the back of my mind that it comes back to me when I get there and drop the clutch. So, um, is Seth coming with you to to Spanner for you and stuff like that, or is it? Have you got someone else to to jump in the pits i've got mark simmons helping me for the for a lot of the plymouth matches um oh yeah so that'll be pretty cool but yeah if, if seth wants to come and he's not racing then yeah i mean un unfortunately um i had a i had a i had everything planned really really well so the british superbike dates came out i gave them to mark and i gave obviously chris louis had them Everything worked out perfectly until eight days later, BSB decided they were changing their calendar. <laughs> so it, it got remade and um, ended up with a couple of clashes, which is unfortunate. We ha actually have a northern tour <laughs> of Edinburgh Friday, Berwick Saturday and Glasgow Sunday afternoon when Seth has a round at Donington. So that's that's a bit of a bummer. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Not not much you can do about it. I think this is a, a, a Lee trigger put here. What's your thoughts on belt drives and hydraulic clutches, especially for a young up and coming five hundred youth rider? But, I spoke to Mike Atkins the other day, and he told me what your thoughts are on hydraulic clutches and belt drives. I don't. So I think, personally, I don't like either of them, but that's my. Yeah. That's what I feel when I've tried them. I've tried yeah. hydraulic clutches many years ago and recently, and I don't like it. I've tried belt drives for, 
forever and a day. Um, and when mm. I, the last long track meetings I raced in, I had a belt drive on my long track and long track bike. And the last grass track meetings I rode in, I had a belt drive on them. I fully understand why they run a belt drive on the long tracks because the primary chain, when they aren't allowed to use a chain oiler in Germany and France and those places, the chain won't last mm. the race. So they have to have another option. But a simple way of looking at it for me is go to the Speedway Grand Prix, walk through the pits and have a look at what the 16 best riders in the world use. And if they don't have, if not one of them has a belt drive on, is it any good? Yeah. Yeah. So, if there was an advantage, they, they would be using it, wouldn't they? Don't, it's, I don't. It's, not, it's, not, it's not down to money or anything. It's down to whether it works or not at that level. And if there's none of them using it, and then sort of says it, doesn't it? It's a late... Brock Nickel. There's a lot of... There's a lot of um, when, when you use a belt drive, there's obviously a lot less cleaning to do. But then if you're a speedway rider who doesn't like cleaning then buy a road bike and be a road racer. Yeah, yeah. So Brock Nichol was put on here looking forward to sharing the track and trying to learn a thing or two from you. There you go. I'm looking forward to it as well, Brock. It was great to catch up last year and hopefully we can spend a bit of time together this year. We've got a young Yankee yeah, yeah. at Plymouth, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dylan. yeah Dylan, Dylan Rimmel, yeah. Have you, have you spoken to any of the other boys? I've you spoken, spoke to, to um, I've spoken yeah. to Henry because he was up at oh, yeah. the other day with the with our Leicester coach. or something, wasn't it? Leicester. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've spoken to him, but not not the others yet. No. Is uh, what what do, what do you think to Henry? Do you think he's got it? He has a go, doesn't he? He was um, yeah. He had, he had an exciting moment the other day up there and he he should have fallen off four times before he actually fell off and he he got into trouble down the straight saved it trouble at the end of the straight saved it trouble in the middle of the corner saved it finally ran out of room and crashed coming out of the corner so um <laughs> for about eight seconds i said oh shit about four times so yeah yeah he's he's good like Around, around Plymouth, you know, he used to stick to the curb before, but like last year, I think he, he sort of got it nailed and he was riding way more out towards the fence and sort of, you know, beating some good boys around Plymouth. So at reserve, I think he's going to be strong. Yeah, it'd be so, interesting. Uh, uh, have you looked at the other riders, you know, um, that Stephen Gore or someone like that? I see, I see he's practicing a lot, but I don't know if that, no, that means I, anything. I don't you know. Know. No, I haven't watched no. him. Okay. Um, so when are you at Plymouth for a practice? Do I you think know? There's one, is there one next Tuesday? Uh, I'm not there. Yeah. I'm in I'm going to Poland on Sunday. I would say it's me, but I don't know either, so <laughs> <laughs> Okay, mate. Right, well we'll let you go. Um it was uh, it was great chatting to you, and I'm and I'm sure I'll see you in a few weeks. I will. I'll see you at press and practice at Plymouth. What have you got coming up, Wilbur? You know what? I think I got three more meetings, and then it's quite quiet for a while. I think that's. I can check it right now. Um, I just had it up. Yeah, I got three more meetings, and then it's quite quiet for a while. So, okay. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's, it's, it's a bummer, but. Is Auburn that, running? Auburn is – they're planning on starting May 28th. And if that happens, then I'm I'm very up for that. Uh, <laughs> try to make it up there as much as I can. Um, I think it's about an eight-hour drive from my house. So, is it that far? Huh? Is it that far? Yeah, it's quite far. And, uh, well, I mean, I get my license over here on the on June 10th, so I'll be able to make those trips a lot. <laughs> I make those, try to make those trips, you know. And just grab a hotel can for the you, can night. Can you drive on your own, or do you have to? You, Jeff, can you drive on your own, or can you? I can drive, you have drive, to drive with own. someone else. Now I'm driving back oh, wow. with, with someone else. You only have to. You get your permit. Your driving your driving permit when you're 15 and a half. And when you're 15 and a half, you get it for six months. And then when the day 
Well, it needs to be six months since when you took your permit test. Yeah. But what it is is that you take your permit written test, and then six months after that, you literally just have to take your driving test, and if you pass, you can go. You're good to go. <laughs> Sweet. So how long you got for that? June 10th is when I get it. Oh wow. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. I turn 16th on the 12th of May, and then I get my license on the 10th. So like the day I get out of school for summer is the day I get to take my test. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Quite stoked about that. Yeah. You got a car? Uh, no. That's the that – that's what we're working on right now. We're just trying to figure <laughs> something out, you know. As long as it can fit my, my bike in the back of it, I'm fine with it. Oh, Brock, if you pass. Here we go. If you pass. Oh, wait. <laughs> Put it up. There you go. It, yeah, listen, I'm not pass. Brock, okay? I don't take seven t seven tries to pass or whatever it is. He had to take seven, did he? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> I was just giving him crap. <laughs> yeah. I say, I, Brock, I, uh, come on next week. We'll talk to you. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a chat next I, week. My, uh, my driving tests, I had four tests. <laughs> I went there and failed. I failed for something stupid. I can't remember. Oh, I think I, I pulled out on the dual carriageway and a car came up behind me to and slowed down. And I was like, that's not really my fault. I was doing the speed limit, but I was in their way. So I, I failed. Fair enough. Whoa. The, so the second one, the second test I went to, it got failed. It got canceled because of fog. And I had to wait like 11 God. weeks for another, for another test because it was such a long wait for tests at the time. Um, and then I thought, well, I've got to pass this time. And then I pulled out of a junction and to the left of the junction, there was a brow of a hill. And as I've pulled out the junction, this other car came up behind me. I failed for the same thing that I failed the first time for. I was just like, what? Like, I, I was like, I'm never going to be able to drive ever. I'm just going to keep on doing tests. And then the, yeah, the fourth time I finally, uh, finally passed. <laughs> anyway. There you go. Then I run. I mean, then they, I run me mum over. Get, you, <laughs> with with that with the car though. Now with the car though. I didn't. I didn't run her over with the car. I did. I oh did leave. God. I leave my handbrake off though. When I was learning before I'd passed my test, I pulled off outside my granddad's house. My mum jumped out the out of the van, and she got into her car, which was in front. I've gone into my granddad's house, and uh, as she like she drove up the road, turned around, and then came down the same road. Um, she was on and she was like where the fuck is he driving to he's not because I obviously didn't have a license and the van drove down the road went round the corner mounted the curb and it hit a Volkswagen Polo and wrote it off but it was like an old transit it had a big metal bumper on the front of it and I had to pay for this guy's car I had to pay for this guy's car I, hadn't even, I wasn't even in it and I was just like oh no yeah but the transit you do had no not damage have at good all luck. you do not have no, good no. luck no not at all. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but you know what? They get what, you with that? the stupidest things, though. They get you with the stupidest things. It's like when you're driving, right? So now instead of 10 and 2, it's 9 and 3. You need to keep your hands like right this now because of like fast movements. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever it is. And then it's you. if you don't look back when you're making a right, <laughs> yes. Can you just when drive you, at 12? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> you know what? I drive with the 6, just the one on the bottom like that. You just, <laughs> um, but then mm. what you do yeah. is that you need to drive like this and then you need, to, if you're going to make a right hand turn, say you're going from a, a two way street to a one way street, you need to make, look, look into the bike lane backwards like this to make sure that there's no cyclist on the bike lane. And if you don't do that, if you, you can't look in your rear mirror mirror, you need to look back. And if you don't do that, you're failing your test. Oh, there you license already in my pocket from many years ago but yeah Dylan, yeah. absolutely I'm looking forward to meeting you too and um having a good fun year that'd be sweet cool right dude well it was great chatting to you we'll uh put you in the in the background and we'll uh i'll speak to you in a second if you just uh if you just wait there no but thanks for thanks for coming on you're a star yeah well that was a great show um that went really I forget, fast right the very it did, yeah, really fast. Um, I just want to say at the very beginning of the show, I forgot to say thank you very much to SB2A Speedway for all of their help and all of the guys that have helped us um, with the Speedway bike uh, giveaway. We're getting, we're getting um, close to that. We're getting really we close are to getting that. close to that. We need to, um, to get that sorted. Um, I've been speaking about 
because because I need to build the bike because um, it's in my garage and Jerry doesn't know how to build a bike, so he's asking me to come. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've built a few speedway bikes in my time, but uh, <laughs> no, um, we want to film it and we want to make a, a feature of this and sort of hopefully uh, intrigue other people that aren't necessarily speedway fans into speedway through building of, of a speedway bike. Um, so we're looking for someone to help us build the bike um, so I can concentrate on filming it. But also we want to get whoever the winner is, we're going to decide the winner and then we're going to bring them to also learn how to build the bike. So we're going to find someone as, as, as good as we possibly can to help us with the bike building. So not only are they going to get a bike, but they're also going to get how to, uh, how to build it to a, might, to a you, hopefully you professional might, level. You might need to uh, hire Brock and Dylan to... To help to build a bike for you guys yeah yeah uh, no, anyone they're, they're... We, we just need somewhere cool that looks sick that um that we're gonna we're gonna build it so uh we're, it's, it's all in the process um i'm going off to poland on sunday for 10 days and then when i come back i've got 10 days of isolation so Lucky i will bastard. get on to it you're gonna be <laughs> hanging out with my dad when i won't be able to yeah yeah, yeah. i'm gonna go and see your dad um but yeah so i will have plenty of time when I'm back to organize that whole thing and then we'll get the bike sorted for, for the winner of the bike competition. So, right guys, it's, uh, it's been great and we will, uh, speak to you next week. Make sure to Adios. listen to the podcast. Listen to the podcast. Yeah. Yes. Listen to the podcast this week. That's that way. Yeah. That, this way. Wilbur is going to edit the podcast. So, uh, we'll, if it's uh, horrible, see, see how he does. Jerry. It's, it's horrible. Jerry's fault if yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> Let let him uh, let him know how he does. So, adios, guys. See you soon. See.